Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. Today I want to talk to you about two different ways you can test your HTTP server in Go. So I've written a very basic HTTP server. It's just a hello world server. Uh, you can see the code right here. Let me show you what it does when I run it. There's no output, but if I pull up my browser, we get the nice little hello world. So let's go back to the code. It's pretty simple. It just uses the standard library. We set up a single uh, HTTP handler on slash, the root directory of the, the web server. We listen on port 8080. And then the handler here, which is what we're wanting to test, uh, just sets the content type to text plain and then returns a text string hello world. No HTML, nothing fancy at all, just to demonstrate how to test an HTTP server. So let's talk about the two different methods. Now to get started here, of course, I, I need a, a test file. So let's go ahead and, and build that. Let's call it main underscore test dot go. And we're going to create a, a function to do our testing here. So the first and probably most obvious way to test an HTTP server is to use the HTTP test package. And that allows you to actually start the server in your test environment and run tests against a live HTTP server. Let me demonstrate how that works. Okay, so here's my working test. So let me just walk you through uh, this test that I've written. On the first line here, I actually start an HTTP server. It's a, it's a test server. It automatically chooses an available port to connect to and uh, starts the server with the handler, which I have passed here, which is my hello world handler. Then 
I create a request to query that server, you see I passed the URL to that server here. Then I do the request, and then I check the result. I'm, all I'm checking here is that the body is what I expect. It should be hello world with a new line at the end. And uh, when I run the test, it uh, tests pass. If I run the tests on the console, we can see what they look like. Exactly as you expect. It's working fine. Now, a couple things to be aware of here. Um, this does start the service as a server. Uh, so it uses a certain amount of resources, a certain amount of overhead, uh, but it's still pretty efficient. You could potentially start dozens of these test servers simultaneously. If you have a dozen different endpoints to, to, uh, to test, uh, and maybe you want to exercise multiple tests against each one, this is still a, a great way to do that. Now, one thing to be aware of, of course, this s.url is just the root of the server. If I'm trying to uh, test some uh, endpoint further down the path, then I might need to modify this with something like, like uh, a, a path name, for example. So you need to make sure that that matches uh, what you're trying to test. Um, also, because this is starting a real server, uh, it does take a few, um, at least microseconds to do that, milliseconds. Uh, so it's a really good idea to use the t.parallel, uh, if I could spell correctly, uh, function in each of your tests. And if you have multiple subtests, call this in each one as well. And that simply tells the test framework that each of those tests can be run simultaneously in parallel. So if you have multiple cores on your CPU or in your CICD pipeline, it can run those tests in parallel and make them ultimately go faster. It's a really good idea to use t.parallel all the time, really, unless you have a test where it explicitly is not useful or, or, or bad, uh, which usually happens if your tests need to execute in a certain order, which is its own problem, but for another video. So that's the first way to test your HTTP server in Go. It's with the HTTP test new server uh, function. Now this is part of the standard library. You can see from the import statement here, this is uh, where it comes from, net slash HTTP slash HTTP test. We can look at the Go doc for that to get a little bit of an idea uh, of what other features it has. It has a lot of, that, that package has a lot of great features that you should be aware of if you're uh, writing code in Go. But let's just take a look at some of them. So you can see we are using uh, the server type and the new server function, the constructor. And then on the uh, server type itself is the URL. That's what we were using. You can also see there's the listener here if you want to make direct TCP connections to that listener, um, whether HTTP2 is enabled or not, uh, TLS configuration if you're testing that. Uh, usually you don't need that for this, but if you're specifically testing TLS capabilities, this could be useful. Um, Great little package, make yourself familiar with it. Uh, it's also great for client testing, but we're not talking about that today. This is server testing. Let's get on to our second case, uh, the second way to test an HTTP server in Go. For this, I'm gonna create a new function. All right, so in this version, I don't actually start a new HTTP server. All I do is call the handler, but I use something else from the HTTP test package, which is kind of handy, which is this new recorder. I'll talk about that in a second. Let me walk you through the entire test. 
So in this case, the first thing I do is I just create the uh, a request. Now notice the difference between this version of the test and the previous one. In the previous test, I used the standard HTTP.newRequest method. And the reason for that is because I'm actually sending the request to an actual HTTP server, so that's required. In this case, I'm not actually sending the server the request anywhere. Um, it's just kind of doing some magic stuff, which we'll talk about. But that means I can use this this slightly easier to use version. Uh, it's easier in tests because it doesn't ever return an error. Uh, basically, it will panic if something uh, is done that would normally return an error, such as an invalid URL parameter or something like that. So it's slightly uh, shorter. Uh, I don't have to, do, have to do the error checking. Uh, otherwise, it's it's functionally the same for our purposes right now. Then I instantiate this thing called HTTP test new recorder. Now the important thing to, to be aware of here is that the return value here uh, satisfies the HTTP response writer interface. Now the HTTP response writer interface you may recognize is the first argument that every HTTP handler takes. If you're familiar with the handler func type, We've all seen this uh, function signature a thousand times. It's the same function signature we have here on our hello world function. The first argument is the HTTP response writer. The second argument is the request. So the, the interesting thing here is that this new recorder returns something that matches that interface. That means that we can pass it directly to our hello world function. So I have just created a recorder and a request. I can pass both of those to the hello world handler, and that's all it needs. It only takes two arguments, and we have both of those arguments satisfied. Now, once hello world returns, we need to convert that recorder into a response so we can do our actual assertions. And that's really simple. You just call the result uh, method on the recorder. So the recorder acts as a sort of, you could call it a fake uh, HTTP response writer. It takes whatever is written to that response it kind of buffers it, and then it turns it into uh, an actual HTTP response that we can do some assertions against. Now, as with all responses, we need to close the body when we're done. Then I read the body, and then I, I actually just copied and pasted uh, the original test assertion into the second test, and it works just fine. We can run the test on the console again, and we will see that. Let me add the minus V flag. You can see that both versions of the test have run and they have both passed. So there you have two easy ways to test an HTTP server written in Go or an individual endpoint or handler. When should you use which version? Uh, I would tend to prefer that my second version with the recorder whenever possible, just because it's lighter weight and therefore faster. It doesn't have to start up a server. It doesn't require TCP connections or anything like that. Uh, so it, it's gonna be faster probably an order of magnitude faster if you have many of these. Uh, but of course, there are times when you truly want uh, to use a server, especially if you're trying to test middleware layers uh, or, or do integration tests or end-to-end -end tests, then this is a good way to go. But for, for isolated unit tests, tend I tend to prefer and would recommend uh, the second approach with the HTTP test recorder. If you're interested in seeing the actual code I demonstrated in this video, you can go over to the channel GitLab account at gitlab.com slash boldly dash go. This project is called HTTP server test. If you found this at all helpful, I hope you'll hit like. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that button so that you get notified when my next video comes out.